Well, first, the WTO rule is not designed by China. It's not made by China. I would say there's something that I want to change. The WTO is designed, a lot, a lot of rules designed for big companies in the past 30 years. And only big companies can do it. And China definitely benefit a lot from opening. I think China should learn one thing, that we grow in the past 30 years. It's because we open to the world. If we continue to open not to the world, fully. We not fully. Okay. American business that wants to effectively go into business in China has a very difficult time, has to partner effectively with a company that's there already. This is why I said China has problems too. The world has problems. And China has definitely has a lot of problems. China should open, we should be more confident. This is what I feel yesterday. I feel the confidence of Mr. Xi that he is ready to open more to the, China, to the world. This is what I suggest that we should solve the problem by business community, right. by negotiation. WTO, China joined WTO for, for like, you know, 20 years or 70 years. I don't, I, I don't know the number. But the past two years that I think we as a business, we as a country, we as the world, we have to review something. Right. But not because unbalanced the things, we stop it. You've been calling for something called uh, EWTP. Yeah. What is that? This is what I would talk about, is that the WTO was great, but they mainly designed for developed countries, big companies. <laughs> There's no opportunity for small business. We want to build up an EW, electronic world trade platform to support young people, small business, things through mobile phones, internet, they can sell and buy across the board. And the other thing is that WTO is, uh, is a very interesting organization. When you put the Doha around, when you put 200 government offices in a one room, ask them to agree on something, it's impossible. I, 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 I can never imagine that they can agree on something together. Business should be designed by business people. So we believe EWTP should be something that the business people sit down together, agree on something, negotiate on something, and get endorsement from the government. I want to talk a little bit about Alibaba and the model itself, because I think uh, for many in the West, if you will, they don't necessarily understand it. And to the extent that Unfortunately, I, that, yeah. to the extent that I could try to compare it to Amazon, which I know you think is an unfair comparison, one of the things that's so fascinating to me is that Amazon and Jeff Bezos have pursued what might be described as a very asset-heavy business model. They're buying airplanes. They want to own the entire supply chain from beginning to end. And Alibaba has uh, effectively an asset light business. It, it is very much, in terms of the retail piece of this, the opposite. You don't want to own the warehouses. You don't want to own the logistics companies. How do you think about that? Is Jeff Bezos right or are you right? And is there, is there going to be a, uh, a meeting in the middle? I hope both are right. And because the world can never have one model. If the world has only one correct model, the world is too boring. Right? We need to have all kinds of models. And the people who do the model should believe in the model. And I believe what I do. Right? The difference between Amazon and us. Amazon is more like an empire. Everything they should control themselves, buy and sell. And our philosophy is that we want to be an ecosystem. Our philosophy is to empower others to sell, empower others to, sit, to service, empower making sure the other people are more powerful than us. Making sure with our technology, our innovation, our partners, our 10 million small business sellers, they can compete with Microsoft, IBM. Our philosophy is that we, we think using internet technology, we can make every company become Amazon. Remember one thing. Today, for our sales, our GME last year is more than 550 billion US dollars. To hire people deliver for us, we need 5 million people. So how can we hire 5 million people deliver things for us to deliver the things we sold? The only way we do is empower the service company, logistic companies, making sure they are efficient, making sure that they make the money and making sure that they can hire more people. But without owning the whole chain, can you do it as effectively? The idea that you're having, watching Amazon uh, being able to deliver things now within hours, literally, 
we made 125 cities deliver within one day last year. Imagine 10 years ago, deliver one thing from Beijing to Hangzhou takes about eight days. Now you can deliver things from Hang from Beijing to Inner Mongolia, some city, within 12 hours. It's improving. You can never expect these things happen within 24 hours. We have patience. So I think, can you imagine that within the 11-11 single day, we sold 17 billion trillion billion dollars, and by delivering more than 600 million packages within three days. This is happening, and this is what we feel proud of. It's not how much money we make. It's not how powerful we are. We think because of the technology, we can make the technology very inclusive, that every small company can use it. This is my dream, because I started my first business in 1992 in China as a small business. In order to borrow money, 5,000 US dollars from a bank took me three months to acquire, still fail. So difficult to be a small business. Today, with the technology, we can empower them. This is something I want to do. One of the critiques, as you know, and it continues to linger around Alibaba, is the piracy issue. This is an I, there's an IP issue, and it's, a, it's an issue all over China, but it, uh, it, you, you take the brunt of a lot of it. Yeah. Um, how much progress have you made in your mind, and how do you think about some of the regulatory bodies in other countries, including the US, that continue to criticize Alibaba for these issues? First, when we start to do this business, as a business like this size, you have to take all the criticism. You have to listen what is right, what is wrong. And second, as e-commerce, when you put 10 million small business, empower them to sell. We do not like Amazon buy. We cannot check. Even you buy when you buy $55 trillion or $55, 550 billion dollars, you cannot check every product. So the model itself and the e-commerce itself may have a lot of these flaws. And third, I would say in the past 17 years, we are the leader of this anti-privacy issues, the IP, protect the IP. But the second, we are internet companies. We do not have the law enforcement. We find this guy is selling product, cheap, uh, you know, fake products. We delete them. We cannot arrest them. But we have a huge progress. Last year alone, we put 400 people into jails. We deleted 370 million fake products listing on our site. I would say we are the leaders and we are using the big data to check who's buying, who's manufacturing, who's selling, what is the address. So now I'm happy about the whole world, especially China, all the government organization, start to realize the issues. So I would tell you a good thing is that today, when you go to those criminal group, which I call them criminals, those fake products, manufacturers, sellers. You praise the quality, though, of some of these. Uh... I would talk about it later, right? Those criminals said they can go anywhere but not not top on Timo because using our data we trace where they are, who they are, what's the address, what the amount. And we will deliver this to the police station and working with them to arrest them. The quality issues is something I want to share with people. It's not by praising the fake products. I want to say that for so many years, those branded companies, you have to be very careful because the fake products their quality improving is scary. That is the difference between us. Because when you find the guys, the thing that people said, this is fake. And you have to find people, you have found a third party institution to check it is a fake or not. We find sometimes the quality is better. And I tell you, another thing is even scary. A lot of, there's a one branded company, he said, we are selling fake products. We check everything, there's nothing wrong. So we say, hmm, what is wrong? So we buy the products from his frag shop and deliver to them. They say, it's a fake. You, you know what I'm saying? Yep. We buy, shop, buy things from the flag shop of this brand and deliver back. 
it's the fake products, they say. So it's a bit confusing. This is fighting against the fake products. It's the war against the greedy, human greediness. It's not easy. You cannot finish it. But you have to continue to fight. And I want to say we put 2,000 people, 1 billion IMB every year fighting against that. It can never finish the war within two years. But I'm happy. Whether people criticize me, criticize us, the most important is that we are happy about the progress we made. Right. But if people praise me, so, you know, when people say, Jack, you're wonderful. I know I'm not wonderful, right? Oh, Alibaba was great. We are not great. We are just a 17-year-old company. But when people say, you're doing nothing. No, we're doing a lot of things. But you don't have to argue. You don't have to debate. You do what you believe.